I'm gonna go ahead and throw off for two. I think we got the slow into Athena, but not the root. Storm's very weak. We're gonna dash up, get the pick onto the Orm. Athena used her ultimate. We're gonna kinda keep falling back. We are pretty weak right now. We're gonna go ahead and activate her too. Get the damage onto Athena, and we're able to secure ourselves a double kill. Unfortunately, Raw also got a double kill. What a do, Scooby Doo Boo! It's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we're gonna to be playing the Toon Mania Cthulhu in solo. If you are new to the channel, I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intentions of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. As always, the full build is in the description down below. If you are a returning viewer, this skin is awesome. It is the tier 5 skin at the end of the Odyssey event, so it costs 8,000 gems. But I think this is the best tier 5 skin that they've released in a really long time. I think this skin is coming out at a great time as Guardians are kind of running solo lane right now. The ability to buy Fighter's Mask and then kind of just get super tanky is making it very easy to play Guardians in solo. So let's go ahead and jump into Cthulhu's kit. Starting with Cthulhu's passive, Cthulhu is going to break down the mental fortitude of enemy gods applying stacks of torment with abilities in the final hit on his basic attack chain. On reaching 4 stacks of torment, enemies are afflicted by insanity. Additionally, Cthulhu gains magic power per enemy god with insanity. The torment duration is going to last for 5 seconds, the insanity duration is going to last for 20 seconds, and Cthulhu is going to gain 25 magical power per enemy with insanity. Cthulhu's 1 is a cone attack that's going to reduce the enemy's attack speed if it hits them. Enemies hit by this ability also do reduce damage to Cthulhu for 6 seconds. This ability applies 1 stack of torment to if the enemy is facing Cthulhu, or it fears them instead if they are afflicted with insanity. Successfully consuming insanity permanently increases the base mitigation of this ability. The attack speed slow is going to be 10% at level 1, 30% at level 5, and it's going to last for 3 seconds. The fear duration is 1.5 seconds, and the damage mitigation is 20% plus 0.5% per stack, and it can stack up to 30%. Cthulhu's 2, the Mire. Cthulhu summons a portal that's going to shoot down from the sky. While Cthulhu channels, the Mire continues to grow as the portal fires out two masses of corruption that hit and damage enemies in the field. The first shot slows enemies while the second shot roots them. Canceling this ability early stops the Mire from growing or the portal from firing additional shots. The slow of the field is going to be 10%, the first shot slow is going to be 35%, and the root slow duration is 1 second. The Mire is going to last for 3 seconds after this ability is cancelled. Cthulhu's 3. Cthulhu is going to create two projectiles at his side and dash forward. If he or the projectiles hit an enemy, it's going to damage them, stun them, and knock them away. The projectiles follow at a slightly slower pace but travel further, damaging enemies as well. Enemies hit by Cthulhu or the projectiles gain one stack of torment. And finally, Cthulhu's ultimate. Cthulhu is going to reveal his true form and then turn into a giant monster. In this form, Cthulhu gains increased health, becomes immune to crowd control, and gains access to new abilities. Enemies near Cthulhu gain stacks of torment, increasing in pace if they are facing him. Enemies also suffer the debuff effects of Sanity Break, causing them to deal less damage to Cthulhu. Cthulhu's 1 in this form is going to be like a claw attack that reduces enemy protections. Cthulhu's 2 is going to throw a ball that knocks up enemies. Cthulhu's 3, he's going to sacrifice a little bit of health to give himself and his allies increased movement speed. He's going to gain up to 30% max health. The duration lasts 10 seconds at level 1, 14 seconds at level 5, and the debuff radius is 50. The duration is going to be 10 seconds at level 1, 14 seconds at level 5, and the debuff radius is 50. In terms of the level 1 order, at level 1, we want to put a point to our 1, level 2, put a point to our 2, level 3, put a point to our 3, level 4, another point to our 1. We want to max out our ultimate whenever we can, max out our 1, max out our 2, max out our 3. In terms of the start, we started with Fighter's Mask. Fighter Mask is going to provide us 65 magical power. Then whenever we backed, we also picked up Warrior's Axe. Warrior's Axe is going to provide us 15 physical protections, 10 magical protections, and 75 health. It has a passive that damaging an enemy god steals 35 health plus 1 per level away from your target and restores 25 mana. This effect can only occur once every 8 seconds. We are going against an Athena. So we really just need to watch out for her circle ability and her taunt into her circle ability. Oh, 
We have wave advantage. We're going to keep fighting her. In the early game, we want to try to stack up our one as much as possible. We stack up our one by getting the target to be insane and then using our one on them. It can stack up to 20 times. I feel like it's very rare that we're able to stack it 20 times in a game. We can get a torment stack from our basic attack, our third basic attack. We can get a torment stack from our one, two, and three. We can get up to two per ability. Enemy missing right. I'm gonna go ahead and make a play for the harpy, try to get a little bit of XP. I do feel like guardians are really strong in solo lane right now, but I also feel like it's really, really boring to go for the harpies because it just takes a lot of basic attacks with the guardians. They don't clear nearly as fast as the other characters. We try to see if we can throw our two over the wall to get the minion wave. It's not going to reach, so we just use it on the camp. When we pick up blue buff, it's going to give us some MP5, and it's also going to give us 10% cooldown reduction. We got this Athena a little scared. She's going to dash away. We're just going to go ahead and basic attack these minions. We are out of health pots from our health chalice. We're going to let this minion kill our minion, so that way she misses out on a little bit of XP. This skin is fantastic. I really like it. Cthulhu has four forms. His one, two, and three are going to activate different forms. And then his special emote is going to activate his fourth form. We are just shy of being able to pick up Voidstone on our next back, so we're going to stick around for one more wave. Norm's here, along with an Athena ulting in. We're just going to go ahead and use our ultimate. A fat nope from us. We do not want any part of that. We're just going to hang out under tower while there's two people in this lane. For our relic, we went with Blink. Being able to Blink into a team fight late game and then cast our ultimate is going to be very useful. We're going to go dash away, avoid the Yorm. He came under tower and activate our two. He uses ultimate. We do have our Blink if we need it. We're just going to start running towards our tower. We Blink past his ultimate. He's very weak, we're gonna dash up. Cast our one, and we're able to get the pick onto the invisible Jormungandr. We're gonna say to Merc, like, hey, we need our blue. We're not gonna be able to secure it right now. We're gonna go ahead back and pick up Voidstone. Voidstone is going to provide us with 150 health, 40 magical power and 60 magical protections as a passive the enemy gods within 55 units have their magical protections reduced by 10 percent this is going to help our ganesh and also our yanis in terms of magic defense this is a really solid hybrid item if your team has three magical characters i definitely recommend you get it If you only have two, it's a little less worth it, and if you have one, you might want to consider getting something else. There's a lot of strong magical items for a defense right now. You have Voidstone, Talisman of Energy, Bulwark of Hope, Shogun's Kasari. I feel like Shogun's Kasari is not something you really pick up on Cthulhu, but it is a valid option. We're gonna try to get her insane and then use our one. We unfortunately did not. We hear a Loki. We're gonna go ahead and dash away. That's the Loki ultimate. We're gonna go use our ultimate. Activate our three, gain the increased movement speed, throw off our two, get the knock up, basic attack, one more basic. He used his ult so he can't ult away. We're able to get the pick onto the Loki. 
Nara's gonna fall back. Don't really want to fight this Athena. So in R2, we're going to get the crown form of the skin. In R3, we get the pilot form. And then in R1, we get the cowboy form. Our special emote is going to give us the black leather suit, Cthulhu. I don't know how else to describe it. You see our jungler nearby. I'm going to try to get some pressure. She dashes away. Really unfortunate that we don't have a stack on our one yet. That's our dash, we're gonna dash up ourselves. We're checking our build. I can always see it in game whenever I'm playing, but whenever I'm recording, I don't have enough time to see what she's actually building. But I don't think it's anything too concerning. I know she started Fighter's Mask. With Cthulhu, we can fit in one hybrid power item. This game we're going to be going into Warlock Staff, or we can fit in one damage item. I like building a lot of protections on Cthulhu, but we do have room for one item. This game, we're going to go Warlock Staff, and since it is a stacking item, we're going to try to pick it up as early as we can fit it into the build. We definitely want Fighter's Mask and Warrior's Axe to start us off, and then pick up some Magical Defense, so we can survive in our lane a little bit more effectively, and then go into our power item, or our stacking item. I think Ethereal Staff is also a really solid item in this slot. If we wanted to go something like Rod of Tahuti, we'd pick that up a little bit later in the build. We're gonna go use our ultimate, her dash is down. We get a knock up, hit her with the one. Activate her three. Our three does also deal a little bit of damage. Oh, she's got the wiggles, good for her. Even though we didn't get the pick, we were able to push her out of lane. She's going for a blue, we're gonna step up. Blink up on it. She's still very weak, but we're gonna go for a blue over her. With that securing of the blue, I feel like we're really gonna be able to kinda of win this lane and not have to worry about the Athena. We've got two levels on her. She's also not gonna have her MP5 and 10% cooldown reduction. So these next few engagements are gonna be very favorable for us. For our second relic, we went with Thorns. I feel like it's gonna be helpful whenever we're fighting into the Loki, Charybdis, or the Yormagonder. Thorns is not super overpowered, but if we can blink into a teamfight late game, activate our Thorns, then use our ultimate, we should be able to make a very large impact in that teamfight. We went ahead and picked up Warlock Staff. Warlock Staff is going to provide us 85 magical power, 150 health, 200 mana, and 10% magic penetration. It has a passive that you permanently gain 1 stack of health and plus 0.8 magical power per stack and receive 5 stacks for a god kill, 1 stack for a minion kill. This can stack up to 50 times. Whenever it is fully stacked, it's going to provide us 145 magical power, 225 health, 200 mana, 10% magic penetration. A lot of health, a lot of mana whenever it's fully stacked. On my way. Ultimate Bit of a team ready. fight going on in mid. We do have our ultimate, so we're going to rotate to it. Enemy 
Grave just uses her three. That's good to know. She's not going to be able to use it on her ultimate. Oh, that knockup was fat. That created so much space for the Cryptus. We're going to throw off our two. We're able to get the pick onto the Yorm. Try to get some damage onto the Sathena. Get the knockup. She's able to dash away, and our ult ends. If we could have gotten one, two off right there, we would have been able to get the pick. We're going to chase. We could not secure, so we're going to start falling back. That was very risky. If Raw and Loki both crashed on us, we most likely would have gone down right there. We do not have any physical protections other than the Warrior's Axe right now, so we're actually very vulnerable to Loki. We get hit by Gribdis. Once again, we don't have any physical protections, so we go down really quick to her. Our team was able to secure the Gold Fury. We are down two people, though. Right now, it's a three for one trade. I don't know if that was really worth it. We were able to secure the Gold Fury. I guess it really depends on how much the enemy team is going to be able to grab right now. We're going to go ahead and start making our way left. Big fight going on on left. Get a little bit of damage off. Yorm is weak. We're not going to chase him though. We're going to hold the tower. Throw off our two. Hit the minion wave. And then we got her too. Getting some good damage off. But we're not going to be able to secure any picks. I think that was our first stack. On our one. We're gonna go ahead and fall back. The enemy team does have three magical characters, so if we're gonna be doubling down on defense, it is gonna be magical defense. Enemy missing left. Enemy ultimate incoming. Retreat middle lane. I will admit that Warlock Staff kinda comes at an awkward time in this build. Like, we've had it for a minute, and we only have 23 stacks on it. We're not really sitting in lane stacking it. But towards the late game, we will have it fully stacked. Help right lane. I'm going for jungle buff. I'm enjoying my... Treat left lane! Defend middle lane! The Higamabob is in play! Ultimate is down! We don't have our ult, but minions are pushed up pretty far and right, so we're gonna see if we can do anything in mid. Nobody's in mid. We were able to secure the red. We're in a little bit of trouble right here. We're gonna dash. We have our ult in six. We get hit by raw ult. We're trying to blink away. We get hit by Loki. We use our ultimate. We use our three for the increased movement speed. And we go down to the Ormengonder. Not our best play, trying to go for the red. We got caught by three people. We're going to go ahead and pick up the Breastplate of Valor. Breastplate of Valor is going to provide us 65 physical protections, 300 mana, 10 MP5, and 20% cooldown reduction. These stats on this item are so strong, it does not have a passive. 
But we're really picking it up because it's a physical defense item and it has 20% cooldown reduction. It's a full deicide. The play is definitely going for fire jam right here. The walk on the skin is absolutely fantastic. Leaning back, slinging those arms around. We're gonna go ahead and set up some wards. Loki is nearby. It's a Loki ult. We dash up, hit him, but he's invisible. He's able to get the pick onto the Gribdis. We're going to start falling back. He did kind of drunk us. Two people chasing us. I'm enjoying my We're gonna go to use our ultimate. Ianus is able to get the pick onto the raw. We get the knockup. We're gonna activate our three, get some additional damage. Get the knockup again, activate our one. Athena is ulting in. We're gonna start falling back. We do not want to fight an Athena and a Loki. Our team is able to secure the Primal Fury. The Primal Fury is going to provide us with a buff that allows us to deal more damage to jungle monsters. This includes Harpies, all the colored camps, future objectives like future gold theories, and the Pyromancer and Fire Giant. I do not think we meant to activate our thorns right there. We were saying group up and then thorns popped. We're gonna go ahead and start working on the Bulwark of Hope. Bulwark of Hope did receive a buff in this most recent patch, 8.8. .8. I think the item is really strong now. It received 20 additional magical protections and then it's got a small rework based on its passive. It used to be 150 shield health plus 10 per level. Now it is 150 plus a percentage of your health. So the more health you have, the greater the effect Bulwark of Hope is going to provide. We're going to go ahead, rotate left. Your malt down. Crib to use our ultimate. We're gonna use our one, use our three, go ahead to use our ultimate, and we're able to get the pick onto the crib disc. We're gonna activate our three, throw off our two, trying to get into jungle, and we get body blocked. Okay. So Loki ult. We get the root, activate our one, Yannis is able to get the pick. Drop our two, that's a beads from Raw. We are tanking tower, trying to get our team to crash on the Phoenix. Right now we are four, two, and four. We've been involved in half of our team skills, which I feel like is pretty good as a solo laner. I'm gonna go ahead and fall back. Throw for two. Root the slow, then the root. Use our one. Dash through, hit two. Ult's down for another 45 seconds. We're gonna try to get our team to hit mid with us. We got the left Phoenix down, so it should be pretty easy to just strip away the towers. Oh, 
the enemy crib this has left. Which I don't really know why. I feel like this is a pretty close game. Pretty even game. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate, create some spacing for our team that's gonna push the tier two tower in mid. Get some good damage on the Loki. He uses his ult. Then they go ahead and dash away. Our team did not push the mid tower, which is unfortunate. Yannis is able to get the pick on the Loki. We're going to start falling back. Yorm ult is going on right now. I'm going to go ahead and throw off for two. I think we got the slow onto Athena, but not the root. Yorm's very weak. We're going to dash up, get the pick onto the Yorm. Athena used her ultimate. We're going to kind of keep falling back. We are pretty weak right now. I'm going to go ahead and activate her too. Get the damage onto Athena, and we're able to secure ourselves a double kill. Unfortunately, Raw also got a double kill. Mercury is working on Fire Giant. Looks like he's going to be able to solo it, but we're still going to try to rotate in and help him out. We're gonna go ahead and pick up our blue buff before backing and then back. By picking up blue, this will allow us to rotate to kind of any lane that we want. We'll go ahead and edit out the pause. So if we snag the blue buff, we can just walk up mid or walk left lane if we need to. If we don't have the blue buff, we're gonna wanna go right and try to pick it up. So we're gonna go ahead and pick it up and then buy our Bowler of Hope. Bulwark of Hope is going to provide us 80 magical protections, 250 health, and 20% crowd control reduction. It has a passive that whenever you take damage and are below 40% health, you gain a shield equal to 15% of your maximum health for 20 seconds. This can only occur once every 60 seconds. So once we get weak, we're going to get a shield. That combined with Mantle of Discord. Mantle of Discord is going to provide us with 60 magical protections, 60 physical protections, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that if you take damage below 30% health, you unleash a shockwave that stuns all enemies within a range of 20 units for one second and become immune to crowd control for one second. This effect cannot trigger more than once every 90 seconds. So if we go below 40% health, we're going to get the Bulwark Shield. Then if they go through that, they're also going to have to then deal with the Mantle of Discord proc. We go to use the ultimate, create a little bit of distance. We thought maybe our team would push this tower with us, but it's just the Shannis. You get our two off, her dash is down. So Loki ult. We would like to not have to tank this, but we will if we need to, and the enemy team surrenders. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, that really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.